Christine, and it's time for the top 10 TV shows 2021. since I've done one of these videos. I usually narrow this down to my top 10 TV shows that are still on the air, but there are some exceptions because there are shows that were too good that are now off the air that I have watched and loved so hard in the past three years that they can't not be on the list. I tried to film this last year. When I finished filming, I realized I forgot two of my favorite shows. And I just didn't feel right to ever even post the video because two of my favorite shows were missing from the favorites list because I watched so many shows. <laughs> cutthroat even to get to 16. I have like four honorable mentions that I'm just gonna zoom through, okay? <laughs> the first I have to honorable mention is the circle. Yes, I had to get food poisoning to sit down and like actually watch it. And when I say sit down, I mean like be lying down dying in a bed. And then I got addicted to the circle. And now I love the circle. It's literally like people in different apartments in the same building messaging each other, trying to get the other people in the circle to like them. And then they rank each other based on like who they like the best. And <laughs> the top two people get to pick one person to block every week. And the winner gets $100,000. It's really simple, but they do a lot of silly games and there's a lot of like mischief and stupid drama. There's catfishing going on. Your profile picture doesn't necessarily have to be you. Like, I guess it's my guilty pleasure show. I don't really feel guilty about it. I just feel weird about it being on the list, but like it is because it's it's a fun time. Mayor of East Town. I couldn't have the circle on the list and not just mention Mayor of East Town. It's fantastic. Like you've heard about it a lot because it's really good. It's like a true crime thriller, but it has a lot of heart. I love Evan Peters in it. WandaVision. Had to talk about WandaVision. I think this is only going to be one season, but it's it's so weird and so wonderful and it builds in the most beautiful, perfect way. Four weddings and a funeral. This was a Mindy Kaling show. It only got one season on Hulu, but I've watched it twice. I love it so much. It's one big long rom-com. Mindy Kaling can slay a rom-com show. She slays a rom-com show. <laughs> We have The Witcher. I'm so excited for season two of The Witcher. This is the character that Henry Cavill was born to play. He's this grumpy, angry, badass with a heart of gold, and I love it so much! The season is formatted a little weird, and I've been told this is because these are a bunch of prequel stories that don't take place along one arc and the second season will actually be the first book of the witcher series the first three episodes are a little all over the place but then yennefer comes into the picture and the witches and the lore around the witches i just got sucked in so quickly i'm a sucker for an amazing witches story i just felt like i was watching like some throne of glass story like about manon and the settings were reminding me so much of the settings that we read about. There's something about the magic and the mythology that really intrigued me. They set it up really nice and it ended right as I was getting like the most excited. I love Yennefer and I just want her and Garl to like fall in and out of love over and over again. I want to watch that power struggle. <laughs> the Umbrella Academy! This is a story about a bunch of siblings that were all adopted because they were all born on the same day and they all have abilities and they were adopted by this billionaire who wanted to use utilize their cool powers and make them into this like fighting hero children's group. Now they're all grown up and they're all doing their own thing, but the world is coming to an end and they're needed to fix it. It is so fun and so beautifully quirky. For me, it falls in the same vein as Dirk Gently. It's so well written. It's got such strong characters and it's hilarious. And I can't wait for more. Coming in at 14, Shadow and Bone, the Netflix adaptation of Lee Verdugo's Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology combined. The actors that they've gotten to play everyone are so on point. They're so perfect. When I watched the pilot, I had chills. I was on the edge of my seat. I was crying. The last time I felt like that when I was watching something was when Catching Fire started. <laughs> This show is just so sweet. Both of the seasons I finished in like a little over a day. It's just like a big hug. Obviously like there's hard moments, but overall the show is like a big hug. I just love everything about it. <laughs> 
this show is so good. <laughs> this young woman is in this club and she meets this really attractive dude. They end up going home together and the really attractive dude is the guy from Four Wings and a Funeral. She wakes up in the morning and like goes downstairs in his house and sees all these movie posters all over the place and realizes that he's a famous movie star. She hasn't seen any of his films but like she knows of him. They have like a really fun great night together and <laughs> she's kind of dealing with the fact that he's famous. Is she gonna date him? What does that bring along with it? And it is so funny. The writing is so good. I was in hysterics watching the pilot. Their chemistry is excellent. Some nights I stay up. All right, I'm editing, Christine. I am bumping my previous 11 for the new 11. That had to be on the list. Squid Game. I watched this right after I filmed this video. I was so upset that it wasn't gonna get to be in it. And here I am editing and I was like, I'm going back in. I'm gonna insert this. Squid Game needs to be on this list. There are a few shows that have defined the last two years in terms of like pop culture phenomena. We had Bridgerton, we had Tiger King, and now we had Squid Game, which was Netflix's biggest launch ever. Literally days after it went up, it was absolutely everywhere. I couldn't avoid it. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I was gonna get spoiled for it if I didn't watch it. And I finally sat down and watched it and I couldn't stop watching it because it was it's a very Hunger Games-esque feeling. People get involved in this game, and this game is deadly. But like, the undertones are very different. It feels like it's happening in our world right now. This game ends up being somewhat voluntary. It's heart-pounding. There's this one episode with the rope, and oh my, it was so phenomenal. I was crying and screaming. I hadn't felt that. <laughs> It's like Game of Thrones and the Vampire Diaries watching an episode where I was like, I can't, I can't breathe. The actors do a phenomenal job. The writers do a phenomenal job. It's phenomenal, y'all. It is dark, but it is. <sighs> we have reached the top 10. Ten. Five or Pen 15. So if you don't know about Pen 15, it's these girls who are in middle school encountering puberty and all the uncomfortable, awkward problems and social issues that surround middle school that maybe you blocked out from your mind. The women that actually play the middle schoolers are like my age, which is so fun. They're like a year older than me, so they're in sixth grade when I was in fifth grade. But like everything that they're wearing and that they're talking about and pop culture wise and like fashion wise, I was there experiencing the same thing. Thing. It's nostalgic AF and cringe AF and <laughs> hilarious. They commit to the bit and it is cringe AF at times because that's what middle school is. But they just keep going hard until it's hilarious. I believe that these two women are best friends in real life. They created the show, they write the show, and I, I just love everything about this. <laughs> I love everything about this. If you watch it, you know that witchy episode? <laughs> like, I. Like I was crying because I was laughing so hard because it was like so accurate. <laughs> what we do in the shadows. This is like the office with vampires living in a house in New York and they're vampires from like ages ago. They're not exactly caught up with the times. It's one of those shows that you watch and you're like, dang, I would have loved to be on the team for this. It's so great. I wanna be an end game. Coming in at eight is this is us. We are on, I believe season five now. This was season five and season six will be the final season. This is us. It blows me out of the water in so many different ways. It always makes me cry. And season five, yes, was the weakest season yet, which is why it's at eight on my countdown. If you've been here for the past This Is Us rankings, I think it was one, <laughs> one and two maybe. It's really, really good. The characters are all phenomenal and the way that the writers weave their stories together is genius. <laughs> We had the 75th Hunger Games of Survivor. Season 40 was all winners that came back to play. And it was one of the most epic seasons of all time. Season 40 is excellent. You do have to watch some of the 40 seasons to really appreciate season 40 because they're all winners and you really are gonna love it much more if you know some of those winners. Season 41 just started and oh, it's such a, I love it so much. If you haven't started Survivor yet in my last Q and A, I did a list of like the top 20 seasons that I would recommend watching. I'll link that Q&A in the description because I did like put a lot of thought into that. And if you'd like to start Survivor, I would recommend following that list. So you don't have to watch all 40 seasons, but you get the best seasons. Best reality show of all time. The reality show that started all reality shows. I 
gave you a part of me. Six is Shit's Creek. Ew, David. Ew, Christine. How are you just watching Shit's Creek now? Why did it take so long? I ate up six seasons so quickly. Like once I hit season four, I was so invested that I think seasons four, five, and six I might have finished within like a span of a week. But I was going slowly up to that point. I was like watching one or two episodes per day. It's so funny. Like the thing is, if you watch the first episode of Shit's Creek, it's hard to like it. Yeah. I mean, at least it was hard for me because I was so annoyed by every character. They like don't know how to be real people. Yet. What's so beautiful about the show though is the growth that you watch the characters go through and how charming these annoying people like they're so annoying but also they're so charming they all have good hearts by episode two i love david so much and i love the dad and then like alexis and moira slowly slowly grow on you the whole town honestly really grows on you they become this unit this family that you love living with it's so good and i'm so proud of dan levy <laughs> i can't wait to see what else he does Alrighty, we've hit the top five, and to be honest with you, I wanted to put all of these at number one. And coming in at five, you, you gotta make your own Sex Education on Netflix. This is one of the few shows that like I watched, and then I went back and watched each season again because I just wanted to feel the happy, amazing feelings that I got while I was watching it again. The writing is so good, the characters are so good, the cinematography is so good. Beautiful. It's so colorful and vibrant in every way. The characters hop off the page. There is no page. It's a TV show. They hop off the screen. <laughs> Even the characters you don't like, you come around to because everyone has layers. Because real people have layers. I love Otis's mom so much. One of my favorite moms on television. I don't know if it gets better than Otis's mom. Sex education is about a boy in high school whose mother is a sex therapist. He starts giving out advice to students who need it. And not Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, Maeve, starts working with him to coordinate appointments and they start their own little like sex therapist business in high school. It's so good and it's such a happy making experience. I can't wait for the next season. Four. What could it be other than Ted Lasso, y'all. I'm so glad I got my free trial of Apple Plus so that I could watch Ted Lasso. It just made me so happy. What a ray of sunshine in a dark tunnel. If you love Leslie Nope, like Ted Lasso really was coming off at me like the male version of Leslie Nope. And I didn't think I wanted to watch Ted Lasso because I looked at the poster and saw like soccer. And I'm not a sports person. I don't care, but it doesn't matter if you like sports at all. It's not about that at all. It's like the most heartwarming, wonderful show full of wonderful characters and wonderful writing and creative storytelling. I, I just can't commend it enough. Okay, seriously, my top three here, like they're all number one. And number three is Hacks! I'm in the process of rewatching this because I loved it so much and I thought the writing was just so on point and the characters were so great the way that they unfolded and we got to know them better and their arcs and their growth. Oh, Deborah and Ava are everything! They just so accurately depict the pitfalls and struggles of working in the industry and what it does to you sometimes and how beautiful it is to collaborate in different ways, learn from each other. So Hex is about Deborah, a really famous established female comedian who has a show in Vegas. She's kind of been on comedy autopilot for years now. Her jokes haven't been updated. Her ticket sales are waning. She has the same agent as this young like 25, 26 year old comedy writer in LA. Her agent is like, Deborah, the comedian needs a writer in Las Vegas. And he tells Deborah, like I have a writer that can come on and work with you. So you can get some new material, spice up your act. He just sends her to her house to meet her. And she gets there and Deborah's like, what the fuck are you doing here? She ends up impressing Deborah, and Deborah hires her. And it's such a beautiful journey. The writing is so quick and so good. I just wanna be myself and I want you to love. And number two is... <gasps> Harry Seinfeld. My love for the show knows no bounds. I find it perpetually inspired every time I watch it. I love the music. I love the storylines. I love the characters. I love like the perfect blend of modern pop culture and filmmaking combined with the 1800s politics and the 1800s fashion. And the nods to like our pop culture and the jokes that come into it. Dickinson is a comedy and I didn't think that it was going to be a comedy by like the name Dickinson. It has so much horror. I can't wait for season three. And finally, at number one, 
the show that is now off the air, I couldn't not talk about it because it is absolute perfection. Fleabag! We follow a woman in London who's struggling and she's trying to find her way. Phoebe Walter-Bridge is just brilliant. She's, oh my god, I didn't talk about killing Eve! No! Okay, Killing Eve is also a number one. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I almost got through this without Killing Eve. Where do I put it? It also has to be in the top five. Killing Eve is number one. Okay, Killing Eve is my number one show that's on the air. And Fleabag is my number one show that's off the air. And they're both tied for number one. I'm doing this. This is my video. So Phoebe Walter Bridge also writes on Killing Eve. And Killing Eve is just brilliant. I'm absolutely in love with Villanelle and Eve and Villanelle and Eve together. There are three seasons so far and it's about Eve who works for MI6. She gets hired to work in their serial killer division to help track down the super great serial killer and the serial killer is Villanelle. Eve is hunting her and she develops a crush on Eve. So like they're kind of flirting through her fucking murders. Eve becomes enamored with Villanelle. They're crushing on each other but also hunting each other down and oh my god it's so exciting and so well done and so well shot. I love it so much. <laughs> so that is a comedy. Killing Eve is more of like a thriller drama but like there is comedy in it. They're both so good. <gasps> oh, those are my top 10 TV shows of 2021. I'd love to hear yours and I'm missing something. Tell me what your favorites are. My name is Christine. I am an author and my newest book is called Better Together. There are two different covers. This is the Barnes & Noble Special Edition. This is the regular edition. This is about two sisters going through their quarter life crisis, which happens after high school or after college. They reunite after 10 years apart. They end up encountering romance and a dash of magic. Also a shit ton of comedy because that's, that's what I enjoy. My name is Christine. I will see you next time. Goodbye.